Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. You've probably heard of the Framework line of laptops by now. These have been out for a number of years and they are fully upgradable laptops. You can take all the parts out of them, put new parts in, you can repair it yourself, you can upgrade it yourself. And two years ago, they sent us their Chromebook to review, which is very upgradable. In fact, the most upgradable Chromebook you can buy. And I was looking at the Framework website the other day and saw that they had some sales on new motherboards. And I said, you know what? This computer might be more useful to me as a laptop, but I didn't want to just throw out the Chromebook motherboard. And so I did a little more digging and found this neat case that Framework sells so that you can take the motherboard from your laptop and turn it into a desktop. So what I think we're going to be able to accomplish today, we'll see if it pans out, is take the Chromebook motherboard out of here, put it into this, and make ourselves the most powerful, upgradable Chrome box that is on the market. And so we're going to undertake that in this video. And I also ordered some parts to turn this Chromebook into a Windows laptop. I have one more part that I have to get. So we're gonna do the Windows upgrade in a second part to this series. But in this one, we're gonna focus on getting the guts out of the laptop here, installing it in the case, and getting ourselves a Chrome box out of this Chromebook. Now, I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure that the Framework laptop here came in free of charge from Framework. However, all of the upgrade components that we're going to be looking at, including the case, along with the motherboard that we'll be doing in part two, I purchased with my own funds. This is not a sponsored video. Everything you're about to see was not reviewed or approved before it was uploaded, and all opinions are my own. So let's get into it now and see how we can make this Chromebook into a Chrome box. Now, I did want to make sure that this Chromebook was up to date before we pulled its guts out, so I've gone through all the software updates. I forgot how much RAM I have on this. It's currently running with 64 gigs of memory, and that's because these Framework Chromebooks were upgradable, and still are. So we've got a lot of potential here for a very good Chrome desktop. So we're just gonna shut this thing down here. And as this shuts down, I'm gonna pull up two guides on the Framework website. One is the main board replacement guide. We're gonna follow about half of this so that we can get the motherboard out, and then we'll follow the other half in the second video. And this other guide here will guide us through putting the main board into the case. One thing to note is that if we had a Windows laptop, we would need to put the BIOS into standalone mode, but we don't have that option with the Chromebook because we can't enter the BIOS. All right, the first step here is to take out our USB modules. If you're not familiar with how these framework laptops work, you get these little modules that convert USB-C or Thunderbolt into another port, and you can slide them in and out and reconfigure your laptop at will. Additionally, you can slide these into the desktop case so you can maintain that functionality. And now what we're gonna do is just unscrew all the screws here and get inside the motherboard. So let me loosen up these screws and we'll see what happens next. All right, now that we've loosened up all the screws, we're gonna flip things around here. Note that these screws, at least on the Chromebook model, don't come out, but they loosen up and allow you to get at the rest of the computer here. So we're gonna lift up the display. One challenge with the Chromebook is that it turns itself back on when you do this. So what we're gonna have to do is wait for it to boot up and then shut it back down again. You might have noticed there we saw the Chromebook Plus logo. That's because this laptop meets all of the requirements for Chromebook Plus, even though Chromebook Plus wasn't a thing at the time. All right, so now that we're shut down again, we're gonna lift up on the keyboard here and pull that up. And I believe what we're gonna have to do next here is detach the uh, cable that connects the keyboard and trackpad to the motherboard. So why don't we get a better angle here? And I'm just going to lift up on this to detach that. And now we can have the keyboard go away. One question that will come up in part two is whether or not this Chromebook keyboard will be compatible with the Windows motherboard. But I should be able to swap out the keyboard component here if I need to do that. So we'll uh, put that in as a question mark for the next uh, segment of the series here. And now that we've got the keyboard out of the way, what we need to do next is detach the battery. And one thing they caution us on in the guide here is to be extremely careful because it's possible to bend the pins. So we're gonna need to be very careful in that battery removal process. In fact, they don't have an image here. They actually show you a uh, video here about how to do it the right way. So they want you to kind of get on both sides of this and just very lightly 
uh, remove it. So we're going to try that and just gently pull that out without bending the pins. Hopefully I was able to do that. They look okay to me. So we were able to accomplish that. Next, we have to disconnect the speaker from the main board. And the speaker is here in orange on the guide. And it looks like it's just a little connector here that we have to disconnect. So I'll kind of follow the same process we did before and detach that. I am not going to take the speaker out of this. I'm going to leave all the audio components in. There is a separate audio adapter you can get for the desktop board, but I'm just going to let things go out over the HDMI USB-C to whatever display I'm putting that into. All right, next up, we have to disconnect the audio board cable from the motherboard. So to do that, we're going to jump over to our motherboard again. There's a little black plastic piece here that we flip up. And when you do that, you can pull the cable out, which I just did. So now we've got that disconnected. We then need to disconnect the display from the main board, uh, which we will do following the instructions here. We have to carefully disconnect the, dis the display cable on the top, which I believe is up over uh, in this upper right-hand corner by the end of the heatsink. The good thing is, is that this motherboard does appear to align with what we saw on the uh, pictures there. So the Chromebook motherboard is very close to whatever they use on the Windows side, at least for this generation of hardware. All right, so it looks like we've got that pulled up, so that is good. We'll just put that aside for now. And again, a lot of this stuff that we're disconnecting, we're not going to reconnect today, but rather um, do that when we put the uh, new motherboard in. So we've got step 10 done. Next up, we've got to disconnect the webcam from the main board. And the webcam here is just above the RAM. So we'll just grab my little spudger here and uh, get that out. And one thing to note is that the Framework laptops all came with a spudger uh, screwdriver combination. I can't find mine, so I've been using my other tools to make that work. Uh, step 12 here is to remove the Wi-Fi module from the main board. Now I'm going to take out not only the Wi-Fi module in this step, but also the antennas because you can mount the antenna in the desktop case here. And I did order a new antenna set for the Windows motherboard from the Framework website. Now the antennas are actually located in this plastic area here. And we can get at that just by lifting up this piece here and that will have that all lift up and out of the way. So we're definitely getting this thing stripped down to the bare bones, but it's a lot easier to work on this laptop than it is on just about any other that I have seen before. And so what we're gonna be doing is pulling this entire antenna module out of here. And I just need to make sure I do it correctly and not take anything else that shouldn't go with it. Um, but what I am gonna do though is grab the uh, Wi-Fi module here and get that loosened up. There's a bracket here that I don't want to lose and I've got a separate bracket uh, for the desktop case. So I'm gonna set this aside because this will get lost and put this in the box with the desktop case so we don't lose it. And we're going to pop this out of here. And then I'm gonna follow the cable around here and just make sure that when we get the antenna uh, system lifted out, we don't take the hinges with it. So I do see a couple of screws in here. What I think I'm gonna do is look and see on the Framework website if there's a guide for lifting out the antenna system, and I'm sure there is. And sure enough, there is an antenna replacement guide. It's a little more extensive than I thought it was gonna be. So what we're gonna to have to do here is actually remove the display and that will be able to give us access to the antenna module here. I did unscrew it a little bit and found that it was underneath the display, so it looks like we're gonna to have to take the display out to get to this. You do have to be very careful in handling the display. So I'm gonna use my uh, screwdriver here, and I'll put a link to the screwdriver in the video description. I found this to be a very helpful little tool here. And there are four screws that hold the display down. So we're gonna to have to do a lot more assembly on stage two of this video, I think but it's necessary to get at the, uh, the unit here. There's a bunch of magnets in here too that everything sticks to. And we'll get that loosened up there. And I think we should be good. Now they want you not to grab the display from the bottom portion here, only from the top. So we'll just go ahead and do that as discussed and lift that out of here. And then what I'm gonna do is just very carefully hold the display in place get this second screw out of here, and then we should be able to lift the entire antenna module out with it. So let me get this out here. And we should be able to just lift this whole module out. 
and then I can return the display to where it was. Now it looks like it's actually taped down here, so I'm going to have to remove this tape and get it removed. So let me go through this. I may put the display in a different spot here. It is disconnected. Um, so let me do that and we'll go from there. Be very careful here. The display is very thin. <laughs> and let's lift up on the tape here and get this out of there. And I just lost one of the screws. All right, after some very careful finagling here, I got the entire module removed. I'm gonna leave the antennas connected to the board for now. And I'm going to set this aside for when we do our final desktop assembly. What I am gonna do in the meantime though is reattach the display. I don't want anything to happen to that. So let me get that done and we'll move on to the next step. Now next up, they're recommending that we remove the memory and the storage from the main board before we take it out. I'm gonna leave it in just because we are going to put this entire package into the desktop case. And they do have some instructions here as to where to find the screws for detaching the motherboard. So I'm going to follow those directions and using my handy screwdriver here, remove each of these screws and then we'll lift the main board out. So let me get to work on that and we'll see how easily this main board comes out. All right, so it looks like we can then very carefully pull out our main board here and that's it, that's our Chromebook. We've got our storage and our memory on here. Again, 64 gigs of RAM. And what we're gonna do next is start getting the desktop board ready for the installation. So why don't we move on to that step and what I'll do is get all of my parts organized and our screws uh, put in the right place because we're going to basically set aside this laptop until part two when we do the Windows motherboard installation. All right, so we've got to get this case taken apart here. There are a bunch of screws according to the guide here that we have to undo. So rather than bore you with that process, I'm going to get everything unscrewed so we can begin the installation process. I'll be right back. All right, the case is removed, and our next step here is to get the Wi-Fi antennas installed. Now, the picture that they had on the guide here was probably from the Windows version of the laptop. The problem is, is that it looks like the Chromebook's antennas are in a reverse orientation because I couldn't get this to go into place here, orienting it the way it was in the picture. So I have to go this way because that's how it snaps in. And the problem is, is that the tape that we had, the grounding tape that we pulled out earlier, uh, was in the other orientation. So I may have to pick up some new tape here. I'm gonna do my best to try to get it to stay in place because we still have some adhesive here. But yeah, this is starting to get kind of hacked together a little bit, uh, but hopefully it will work when all is said and done. And I'm gonna leave the Wi-Fi module hanging out here for another few minutes until we get uh, the rest of the guide done here. So we have the antennas already connected to that, so we're good on that insofar as step five on the guide. So we're just gonna make the best of this here, and hopefully it'll all come together when it's time to boot up. You do have the option to install your own Wi-Fi antennas, and I may end up having to go there, <laughs> depending on how well this works. But I'm having some significant routing issues with the cable here, uh, given what we've got to work with. But I'll make it work one way or the other. All right, this Wi-Fi thing has been probably the biggest frustration of this project, partly because it's going in the opposite direction versus the guide, but also it's just very difficult to work with in the tight space here. What I ended up doing was something I probably shouldn't do, but uh, I am securing the card directly to the case as opposed to using the bracket that it came with because it was impossible to get the cables routed without having everything pop out every time I tried to put the bracket over those cables there. So I think we're okay here. I just need to make sure that the uh, leads there aren't touching, which they are not. So I'm going to move forward here with a little bit of a hack together solution, but that's typically how my projects end up going. Let's take a look and see what the next step is. Now, according to the guide here, our next steps would be to install the audio board, which we are opting out of in this project. And after that, it's just closing up the case and booting. So what I'm going to do next is install uh, two of these USB modules, the USB-C ones here. I'm going to use this one for the power and we'll use this one for video. I don't have an HDMI adapter here, so I'm going to attach my HDMI adapter to this monstrosity here and see if we can get something to boot up. Again, I doubt it, but why don't we get our monitor on the table here and see what happens. All right, so here's the moment of truth. Why don't we connect power up to one of those USB-C ports here and see what happens. The fan comes up. It does start blinking red here, as you can see, but
but why don't we give it a second or two and see what happens. I also installed the USB-A adapter here so I can plug in my Lenovo wireless keyboard and trackpad. So I'm just going to let this sit here and kind of think about life for a second or two and see what happens. Now remember, this was a laptop, so it would obviously be looking for or expecting a display, but now look at that. We are up and running here. Now I was not expecting this to actually work, but it looks like even though we had a long boot time here, uh, it did boot up. And why don't we see, I've got a Wi-Fi signal here, not a very strong one, even though the Wi-Fi access point is right underneath me. Oh, it looks like it just got onto the right access point. So we've got internet. Why don't we go to my YouTube channel here and see if it uh, works at all. And it looks like it is. So how about that? We have a functioning Chromebox here, and I didn't have to do anything else to make it work, which is what I was expecting to do. So why don't we seal it up now and get this thing uh, finalized in its Chrome box form, and I'll also show you what your mounting options are. All right, so we've got it now in its completed form, and it looks pretty cool, I think. And if you look on the overhead view here, you can see that all of the components are visible through the case. We've got our USB modules installed there. I left one uninstalled here so you can see how those USB ports align. I found everything aligned nicely once I put the top of the case on. It really gets the motherboard angled properly. Now, there is an airflow consideration here because you've got uh, the exhaust port here, but it does draw air in through the bottom. So you can't just lay it flat on the desk like we were doing earlier. So what they provide in the box is a mounting shoe or, or thing uh, that you can attach to the bottom here. They slide into the slots so that it will sit kind of like this on your desk. So it is a bit wide, so you have to find the right spot for it. But also in here, they have uh, Visa mounting screws. So if you wanted to attach this to the back of a display, you could do that instead. So you've got two different mounting options. One is just to have it mounted on the desk here with the stand, and this will slide into the screw holes here. Let me get it in installed properly so you can see how that works. And then we can have it just sitting like so and just off to the side or something. So you definitely don't want to have it lay flat, uh, but you can mount it or have it sit like this. All right, so we now have a Chrome box where I once had a Chrome book. In case you're curious about the hardware on this, this is an i5-1240p. This does have the XE graphics. We did upgrade it to 64 gigs of RAM in the initial video when we reviewed the Chromebook but it only has 256 gigs of storage right now, but I could, of course, upgrade that later. As you can see, I'm running an update on my Linux installation in the background, but it is really so smooth here, even though we've got some multitasking going on, and that's because we have so much RAM. So you wouldn't know there's some big update happening in the background here, just given how much memory we have to play with. I was surprised that this booted up on the first go here. I was expecting, as I mentioned, some real difficulties given this article I found on Android Central. Uh, this author, uh, Andrew Merrick, really struggled getting it to boot for the first time. He eventually found this article on the framework support pages for AMD-based machines that also worked for his Chrome situation. But for me, it booted up initially right when I plugged it in. The boot time is a little slow, but once it's up, it's up, which is great. One other bonus here is that this is now a Chrome Box Plus. Remember, Google came up with a different version of its operating system for more powerful Chrome books, which this once was. So this is basically a Chrome Book Plus in desktop form, and we get all of the extra features that Chromebook Plus provides. So cool stuff here. It is working. The next step here, once my Windows Wi-Fi hardware comes in, is we will get the Windows hardware installed on the laptop and we'll now have two computers when we started with just one. My only gripe was the Wi-Fi components here. It didn't quite line up with the instructions because the Chrome Wi-Fi antenna was inverted from the Windows one as far as its wires were concerned, but it seems to be working here just fine in the cooler master case. So framework appears to work as advertised. You can do whatever you want with their hardware. That will do it for this one. Stay tuned for part two, and until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.